Hello, this is Petraeus, and welcome to another episode of Uphill Climb Challenge. Today, we'll be taking the 1951 Holden FX sedan up the, up the mountain to see how it handles. Now, this is a very interesting car. We had a little time playing it around in the game itself. I can honestly say it's a very squirrely vehicle. It should be very interesting to see how it can handle the uphill climb. Of course, first things first. I'm pretty certain that the engine that it comes with will not reach the top of the class, so we got to drop in the 6.2 liter V8. Big old engine. And we got to put on the better tires. The rally compound. Go from 145 up front to a 205 and a 225 in the rear. Some pretty small tires are going on this thing. But one thing that this car does have going for it is a very, it's a very small car. Very small car. Definitely got to put a better gearbox into this thing. As a reminder, I can only customize this thing to the top of A class. If we want to put on better brakes, we want this thing to stop. We definitely want to put on a stiffer suspension. The rally suspension on there. Sway bars. Put on roll cage. Hopefully we won't need the roll cage. Now this is where it gets a little interesting because the car, if you strip it down completely, is very light at 2,031 pounds. So it begs the question, do I need to strip it down quite that long? Honestly, I'm not sure. Well, get more power out of it. We want some weight because we want to be able to put the traction onto the ground. So we go for the mid tier. Now, for the fun part, upgrading the engine. All right. Uh, I'm going to do Basic upgrades. Get more get up and go because that's the big thing with these the, the twists and turns going up the mountainside. It's very much a point and shoot sort of vehicle. Heck, we might not even have to touch the. Uh, yeah, we might not even have to touch the cameras. This is uh, fascinating. Alright, install. Pray and hope to God this thing will have the traction to handle going up the mountainside. So I'll meet you right over there. And here we are at the bottom of the mountain. Let's get this challenge started and see how this classic car can handle the climb. Sounds quite beastly with that V8. It should be quite the handful to drive. Remember, we went right there. No traffic. No music. We are in morning sun. Hmm. Okay. 
feels a little different. I remember it being. Maybe not stripping all the weight out was a good idea. So I think maybe it was a little bit too much power for the tires and the uh, not enough force down on the tires to create enough friction so that the car will have uh, enough, uh, well, enough force to propel itself forward. Very interesting, very interesting. It's actually, this thing's actually kind of controlled, but... Yeah, this... Out of the, out of the pack of the cars, I mean, there's a... Like, there's the Ferrari and everything. But there's a lot of cars that I feel like... are really underrepresented in racing games in general. One... Two such brands being Packard and Studebaker. Like, they were big brands back in that time. Like, I don't know what it would take to get those brands into racing games, but I think it'd be absolutely worth driving. One of my favorite ones, um, from the Studebaker, anyways, is the Hawk. By the 65 or 66, or even if you want to go back even once from the 50s. They always had a certain class to them that you didn't really see in the cars. And believe it or not, I actually saw one uh, near where I live, although definitely not in driving condition. I was uh, sitting in a field uh, where horses are kept, actually. It was probably about, uh, about five years ago they disappeared, so I don't know what happened to them. If they were scrapped, which I think would be really sad, because considering that, you know, there's a bit of history. But, uh, back to the point here, is I would love to see a, see some racing series take on the Packards and Studebakers. I mean, they're all about going with these smaller brands now, so why not take them on those, those American brands? Alright, 2.40 is the starting time. Definitely not! A great starting time, but definitely got plenty of room to work with. And the car isn't trying to kill me either, so that's a good, that's a good start. <laughs> so here we go again. All right, drop the hammer and let's fly. Well, maybe a little too much power off the line. It is kind of floaty. That's one thing, even with the upgrade suspension and everything, it just... I just don't think it just has enough weight. Which sounds insane, I know, but these things are not exactly aerodynamic. I'm sure if I put like the front skirt on it, the front splitter and the spoiler on it, which actually looks silly on this classic cars. I might might have got away with it, but I don't know. Especially since ah tree. Right, come on. Well talking about the holder here, I mean I do like I do like the aesthetic. It's definitely like I never even knew this car existed until I see it in this game. I mean, I knew the whole it existed, obviously. I mean, it's not exactly what I would call a special looking car. I mean, it looks a lot. It basically looks like a Ford or a Ford. Like, yeah, Ford Coupe. Come on. I find it very interesting that the, both of these vehicles are automatic uh, transmissions. I guess uh, manual transmissions came... I think they came in the same time. They would have Maybe that's what made these cars popular, is that they did have an automatic transmission, so you don't need to 
play around with the clutch and the stick. And I definitely know these older cars, they were hard to use. You had to rev match, double clutch all the time. Otherwise, you'd grind gears and build a little classic release with a stereotypical uh, gear grind and oh boy, save that one. Can we set a better time even though we kissed a tree? Okay, that's good. Uh, no, not this time. I think we might have, especially going down that last bit there. So one more try to make up for some time. Here we go. Last try. That V8 just sounds so nice, though. I don't have to give it that much. You can just hear the tires just screaming like, I don't want to go this fast. I don't like this much torque. Like, this car is definitely uh, designed more to be like used to drag races and that sort of thing. Because in a straight line, this thing is absolutely crazy, even considering it's on very, very tiny tires. I mean, you could put this thing's horsepower well into the thousands. Which is why would you want to? When I try to sign cars, at least for myself, like racing things, I try to go for something that's balanced. I try to go with as much speed as I can that I can handle, but I want something. Because I'm not exactly... I'm not the best one. Ooh. Oh man. Oh, oh, well. I think this is. I think this run is done for. Oh well. I think this last bit here, come on. There we go. What I might do for the next one, this might actually take a look at the Ford too. Just to see how it stacks up. Because that's probably the that in the Mercury too. Yeah, probably more like the Ford, because it's it, it, it sort of has more of the same body shape. Even though it's made from 49 on this one. So I Come on. Let's at least set up a decent time. Uh I think it might be in line with the, uh, the Dodge Dart, at least. I mean, it kind of makes sense, because the Dodge Dart was built to be more of a drag racer. And handle turns and dirt racing. Might do that next. I do have an idea of maybe something that... So for the good old boys, in a way. For the one after... Uh, come on. Oh, that hurt. No, ain't happening. Alright, come on. Let's at least get this finished. Oof. Yeah, wow. That was bad. That was bad. Oh, well. Gave it the best we could. Not a whole lot we could have done there. It's, it's the car's tires, they come, uh, it's upgraded, are too small. I don't know if that's just a design decision. Wow. Um, well, at least I guess the AI is having a little bit of fun. But yeah, this car just does not like being. Uh, <laughs> does not like the dirt all that much, which shouldn't be surprising. But... Well, thank you very much for watching. And um, the, the, the climb here, and we'll compare it here in just a second after I uh, calculate the uh, final totals here. So I'll be right back with you in just a minute. And here we are with the final results. 
the Horn FX sedan coming in sixth place at two minutes forty seconds point four seven. Uh, beating out the Dodge Dart significantly at two minutes forty seven seconds, and just coming behind the Chevy Bel Air about four seconds behind with two minutes thirty six seconds. I can definitely tell you that the uh, Horn was very much of a hard vehicle to drive. It was very eager to throw itself around in circles. Uh, not very much a grippy vehicle, I can tell you that much. But overall, I have to say it was a very fun experience driving this vehicle. I hope that uh, in Forza they'll bring in more of these classic vehicles in. Look at the older vehicles that they, in history, give uh, more light on vehicles that are a bit rare. So. I would like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time in another episode of Uphill Climb Challenge.